After President Andrew Jackson in 1829, this picturesque resort village is a haven for outdoor enthusiasts all year long. A special place to be. Um, lots of romance, lots of things for families. Um, we're very event driven. There's always something going on in Jackson. In the winter, Jackson attracts skiers, both Nordic and Alpine. The Jackson Ski Touring Foundation, a nonprofit cross country organization that offers nearly 95 miles of well groomed trails for both the novice and the racer. Black Mountain has 45 trails for downhill skiing and snowboarding for the entire family. Bigger than most people think, looking up the hill, it doesn't look that big, but it's it's actually a probably a mid-sized mountain, you know, small to mid. Um, the terrain is fantastic. We have windy trails through the woods, and that helps them hold their snow really well because it's not the big, wide-open trails that get scraped off. And we have really great groomers who know how to put snow down and take care of it and keep it all season. Jackson's landmark is this wooden bridge. Built in 1876, the red wooden covered bridge crosses the Ellis River. The red covered bridge here in Jackson is one of the most photographed sites in New England. It's called the Honeymoon Bridge. No one here knows exactly how it got that name, but it could be that Jackson is a very popular destination for weddings. I would call Jackson, the whole village of Jackson, a wedding venue. On any given weekend, there's always a bride here. Um, having pictures taken, whether it's great big wedding parties or just the, the I've, I've got pictures myself of brides sitting right in the cover bridge. There is no shortage of places to stay in Jackson, from a cozy inn to one of the older, elegant hotels. The Wentworth Inn was built in 1869 by Joshua Trickery as a wedding gift to his daughter. The resort offers 61 rooms and suites and is popular all year long with all members of the family. Main Street in Jackson offers a number of shops, restaurants, and inns within walking distance. Among them, the Wildcat Inn and Tavern, named after the nearby Wildcat Mountain. It has 10 rooms plus a separate cottage. The tavern is a warm spot on a cold winter's day. Well, it's an antique building. You know, it's been around since around 1936, Inn and Tavern. Current owners have had it 12, 13 years now. It's a great just place to come and do some apres ski fun and music. We do a lot of music six nights a week, so it's big for the music around the area. Sue Holt is the manager of the Wildcat. She says a lot of the clientele are repeat visitors. A lot of Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut. I have a lot of regulars that stay here or I chat with that are from those areas. A lot New England. We get some British families, you know, but you know, a lot within New England because I know this is where the skiing is. You know, in Jackson, you're in the middle of everything. If it is not a bluebird day, in other words, perfect sunny ski weather, take a trip back in time and visit the Old Town Hall, now home to the Jackson Historical Society and Art Gallery. Hi, Warren. Hi, Audrey. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Headed up by Warren Schumacher, this lively 94-year-old knows Jackson's history inside out. Jackson is part of the Hudson River School, founded in 1825 by artist Thomas Cole. The Hudson School is a group of landscape artists who traveled from New York to the White Mountains to paint. Thomas Cole's works hang here in the Historical Society. This one is a great one too. Shows the title of that is Travelers on the Sarco. All of the North Country of New Hampshire uh, is built on art. And uh, it's really the painters that came early that opened up the area, uh, painted their landscapes and took them to wherever they came from and people saw them and then wanted to come here. So that ultimately started the hotels in, in the North Country. So there's, and even down to today, there's a, the basis of the tourism up here in large part, in addition to the skiing and so forth, is art. 
Now a new generation of young artists are inspired by the Hudson River School. Eric Koppel and Lauren Sensakarik both have artwork in the gallery. I, I don't use any photographs in my painting process, so it's very much a 19th century type process where I go out and draw and I do small paintings outside and then um, I use the small paintings and drawings plus imagination and memory in the studio to make the larger paintings like this. Uh, actually, I started it on site, um, so one, you know, kind of chilly autumn day. The weather is always changing. There's dramatic skies, beautiful clouds. The mountains, obviously, are just amazing. <laughs> Jackson is known as an idyllic winter village. There are events here all year long, outdoor festivals beginning in the spring. We have a covered bridge dance in August. We've got an art festival in August. We've got the Wild Quack Duck Festival. A lot of really unusual things going on. We stay open here at this uh, society all year. We'll always find 19th century white mountain art on display in Jackson and in the North Country, right here in our museum. Lots to do, and a landscape that truly is a work of art. Mm -hmm.